everybody, how's it going? This is an audio test. Today we're going to be controlling vMix audio channels with a Midas M32R. Stay tuned. First and foremost, um, I was very excited for this project. I heard about this possibility. I've done vMix audio control with MIDI controllers. Um, I think I've only actually posted one of the video, but I've done it a couple of times with a couple of different things, just mucking about. Uh, but what I wanted was I wanted to be able to have an actual board control actual XLR inputs and then also control my vMix levels. So for a hybrid event, I would be able to adjust microphones in the room. But also, if by my vMix calls were coming in at different volumes, have the audio guy be able to adjust those in real time. That way, the vMix operator would be able to focus on switching, uh, building looks, you know, lower thirds, that type of stuff. So, someone told me about this. I finally got my hands on an M32R. Uh, I spent a whole week doing this. And... This was probably the most frustrating thing I have done in a while. Uh, the first time I recorded this, I showed three quick um, steps on the Midas and started using the vMix and it didn't work. Um, I had lots of problems, which I'll talk more about in the end. But So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to set up the Midas. And then we're going to turn on vMix and we're going to assign faders. We're going to um, probably do a couple buttons as well. Uh, mute, unmute, and then solo. Even though solo, you're only soloing it for vMix person. Um, so that's kind of kind of not op optimal. Um, what we are not going to be doing in this video is I am not transferring audio from the board to vMix or vice versa. Uh, that's a longer video that takes a lot of note taking when you're doing your routing. Um, and also takes a good amount of cursing and beer, uh, because it inevitably you're going to get something not routed properly or redundantly or just isn't going to want to do it. So we're not going to cover that today. Also at the end of the video I'll give you my suggestions on what to do but as of right now we're not we're not doing that. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you the settings that I have used and then we were going to undo some of those settings and then redo them and hopefully in about 10 minutes, when we get to the computer, everything will work perfectly. Hopefully. So, setup, remote. First thing you want to enable is this first column, which is enable remote button. We have it enabled. Second thing is you want to select the Mackie MCU protocol. I don't think it has anything to do with Marvel, but, you know, it makes me remember it. I have my interface set up as MIDI in and out. On the right-hand side for MIDI control interface, I have MIDI in and out and card MIDI both selected. And below that, the only three things I have selected are for the MIDI transport, I have the fader position, I have the channel mute, and I have channel pan. And we could probably live without channel pan, but after spending a week on this, this is the configuration I got to work. Now, we're not done here. So, routing. Go to our inputs. If you're used to an uh, M32 routing, this is going to look really weird to you. Inputs 1 through 8 are on the card. 9 through 16 are also on the card. My inputs 17 through 32 are the local XLR inputs on the back of this. 
one of the things I ran into was when I was trying to adjust my faders, for some reason, for some reason, it was when I brought my, my DAW fader, what I thought was my DAW faders up and down, it was moving channels one through uh, eight as well. So to get around that, I switched all my local, because I only have 16 XLRs on the back of this, I switched them all to be inputs 17 through 32. I could use inputs 17 through 32 and I'm fine. And it's literally the difference between having, excuse me, having that up versus having that up. Before we get to vMix, we have to download and install this software. We don't need the edit software, but we do need this. And it needs to be turned on. So you'll see it once you, here. so we do need to install this. And it's a simple setup. Mine's already installed, so it might give me like an error, but you want the Clark Technic Live, not the Clark Technic USB. There are two on the website, Clark Technic Live. And it is a USB driver, but there's one that says Clark Technic USB, and this is the Clark Technic Live. So we need to install this real quick. Yeah, I'll reboot in a little bit. So we got this installed. It will appear, it's supposed to appear down there. So as you can tell, I don't have anything built in this vMix yet. What I want to bring in is I'm just gonna bring in a couple of videos that have audio. And I've got two already sitting here from another video that I never finished and never published, but doesn't matter. What matters is it gives me a fader. That's what I care about right now. This can be a vMix call. This can be a video. This can be, for funsies, an audio input. Uh, okay. Also a big thing with vMix is you want the USB plugged into the machine before you turn on vMix. It's a thing with them. Every, all your hardware needs to be plugged up before you turn on vMix. Otherwise, vMix is not going to read it. As always, settings. Wait a second. Short. We want to, you know what, let's go ahead and press find first. Aha, it sees it. Okay. So let's add, find, press it up. So, audio set volume for input one. Okay. So as I'm pushing this up, this fader goes up. I let go of it. It stays there. <sighs> when I first did this, I was having to press the DAW remote, and it would bring up faders over here, and I would do it over here, and I would push the fader up, and exactly one second after I let it go, it would move it back down. Now, the data was getting moved, so as I pressed the fader up, it set the fader in vMix, and then the fader came back down to zero, but the fader in vMix changed. The reason this was a problem was the moment you went to move the fader again, you're actually starting down here, so it would literally drop the volume down and then bring it back up. So that was the most aggravating. So if you're running into that issue, if you're watching this video because you're running into that issue, that's why I set my one through eight inputs to card one through eight. Because when I do it this way, this fader does not move back one second later. So six pack of beer all by itself. Okay. So now I have three faders that are adjusting three things on my vMix. So if we were in show and the audio guy has his local microphones up, I can do both of these buttons. My locals are over here and my vMix is over here. So I have all of my inputs up at once. 
And if you had the full-size Midas 32 or the full-size X32, you'd actually have eight more banks. So you could probably have your buses up and all that chat. Everything's working, everything is glorious. This isn't stressful at all. Yeah, so, so now let's talk about the stuff I don't wanna cover in this particular video. Leave me a comment if you do want me to go over this. Because you're using the USB co cord into this, you could technically send a bus to vMix that has its own mix minus in it and output from vMix through the USB cord to the machine. Here's why I don't recommend, here's what I recommend doing instead. Take your PCDI out of the headphone jack to two XLRs or one XLR, whichever type of PCDI you have, into this and give your audio guy control. That way the people in the room can hear the vMix properly. So th this uh, only takes a single XLR you only get a single XLR out on your buses, so you can basically mix minus vMix out and send that into vMix as to what gets broadcast across your stream. Now, if you're, if you're using vMix to stream to a website or to like a Zoom or Teams or YouTube or whatever, uh, at that point, the vMix audio wouldn't need to be in there. No, it wouldn't because it's vMix is going to generate it and then push it out through through its external. So yeah, you can mix minus vMix here. It is technically adding like two fail points, but they're PCDIs hardly hardly go wrong. And if if they do, you, I'm sure someone's going to tell me a horror story down in the comments. But they don't go off go bad that often, so I wouldn't really call them a fail point. Um, the, the jack or whatever is gonna go bad before. And, and also just a USB interface, you can control it a little bit better. Um, it gives you the mix minus. There's less internal routing to do. You're just doing external routing basically. It's more stuff to set up. Um, if you attempt to do all of the audio back and forth with just the USB and you make it work, leave me a comment, tell us um, how you configured it in your routing screen and how well it worked and how well you got it into vMix. Because at one point I did try doing that and just, it, it, it was a mess, it, it got really annoying really fast. So, but that was me. So if this was helpful, please leave me a comment. I never saw a video or an article specifically talking about this specific board with specifically vMix. I saw a bunch with this board and Logic, and I used that to get this done. And I mean, I've made a bunch of videos with just MIDI, or I've, I've have, I made one video, but I've played around with just MIDI controllers. If you, if you liked this video, if you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. That works too, I just, anything to hit the algorithm. If you really enjoyed the video, please leave a comment. Uh, go ahead and watch a couple more of my other videos. Uh, they should be popping up here in a second. All right, so, always, so as always, I've been Redbeard, and this is what I do. Yeah, um, videos. Click on the videos, please. Or the, the face in the middle. That's, that's a good button, too.